Welcome our Tales and Drawing YouTube channel. Once upon a time, a rabbit living in the forest wants to make race with his friend Turtle. The rabbit underestimated the turtle and said, What do you think? Shall we make a race? Do you have a chance against me? Don't trust yourself too much, it depends. They start to race with the squirrel referee. The rabbit is quite sure to win the competition. Expectedly, the rabbit passes to the turtle and goes away. The turtle and the world to close the gap. Seeing the finish line, the rabbit decided to take a break and thinks that there is too much time for a turtle to reach to me. If I rest a little bit, I can enjoy the defeat of the turtle more. While resting under a tree, the rabbit fall asleep. The turtle, who doesn't give up the race, slowly come to the finish line. At the last second, the rabbit wakes up, sees the turtle and rushes, but the turtle wins the race. The squirrel referee gives the medallion to the turtle and says, my dear friend Rabbit, don't forget, who doesn't give up wins the race. Once upon a time, a house mouse visited his friend, a field mouse. The field mouse gladdens to see his friend. The field mouse sorrows because it has nothing to serve more than some corn. Feeling sadness of the field mouse, the house mouse says, Let's go to my home. There are so delicious meals that you can't imagine. They go to the house of the house mouse together. Seeing various foods in the kitchen, the field mouse says, Oh my god! What a superior food store this is! Should I live here too? Unfortunately, the terrifying cat of the house realizes them soon and starts to chase them. The house mouse says to the field mouse, Run my friend, run! Follow me! Two friends bypass the cat and enter to the home of the house mouse door a hole in the wall. The house mouse asks, Do you enjoy my house full of various food snacks? Yes, you have marvelous foods, but you have also living with fears. Sorry, my friend, but let me go to my home. My humble cones is now for me. In the following day, the field mouse returns back to his nest takes a seat on its table and eats the delicious corns. Once upon a time, the sun and the wine chats. The sun says, Hello, wine. Hello. Sun, do you see the old man wearing coat there? I swear, if I blow, he removes his coat. Let's try and see who will succeed. Suddenly, the weather turns dark and black clouds come. The wind blows like a storm, but the man tightens his coat more and more. The matter how long the wind blows, the man doesn't remove his coat out. You blow! Perfect, but you can't force him to remove his coat. Look at him now, how easy he will remove his coat. The sun starts to send his shine to the earth. The weather becomes hot slowly. 
the man wearing the coat start to sweat. Soon, the man removes his coat. The weather becomes quite warm. The sun smiles for his attainment. The sun says the wind. Do you see? If you want to make somebody do something, you should not force him or her. Instead, you should behave calm. In a mountain village, there was a shepherd boy guiding sheep. The shepherd is bored to do same thing every day and plan the job for villagers. One day, he starts to cry. Help! Help! A wolf attacked to the heart! The villagers notice the boy voice and run to upland for help with sticks, stones and oars. Villagers assume and meet the wolf but find the boy safe and relaxing. Seeing the villagers the boy starts to jog Hurry, the villagers! Leaving the boy alone with his sheep, villagers return back to their home sadly. In the following day, a hungry wolf approaches the herd slowly and slightly until the shepherd boy realizes the wolf is running after many sheep. The shepherd panics and cries, Help! Help! A wolf attacked to the heart! Villagers hear the scream of the shepherd boy, but they think that he lies again, therefore they don't go to help him. When all sheep are killed, the shepherd realizes that no one would come and returns to the village. Understanding the incident, villagers get angry to the shepherd boy. The boy sorrows and assures he never lie again. In old times, a fox and the stork become friends. One night, the fox invites his friend to the dinner. The sly fox plans a joke to make fun with the stork in the dinner. In the night, the stork comes to the house of the fox. In the dinner, there are two cups of soup as meal. The fox eats the soup easily and fills its stomach. The stork can't eat the soup with her long beak. The fox looks and says, Oh, my dear friend, are you still hungry? <laughs> Stork miserably leaves the house of the fox and murmurs, Oh, my dear friend, I will take my revenge, you will see. Some time passes and another night, Stork invites the fox to the dinner. The fox wears his sweets and walks through to the house of the stork. Slowly the fox smells a delicious scent of meat. The stork makes such a clever move that the fox can't not forecast. The stork puts the meat narrow and long cups and eats meat smoothly. No matter how many times the fox tries, he can't reach to the meat. At the end, the fox understands his mistake and returns back to his home hungry with blame. A lion, while resting under a tree in the forest, realizes a mouse walking around. The lion grabs the mouse, hangs from his tail, and says, You are disturbing me, but if I eat you, you can't even feed my one bite. The lion depresses the mouse and lets him free. 
the mouse says, Thank you very much. I will never forget your kindness. One day in the future, I may also make a favor for you. The lion answers, You poor mouse, how can you favor me? Just pray for your life. Several days later, the lion takes a walk in the forest. He can't realize the trap goes on. But suddenly he captured by a trap of hunters and finds himself on a mesh hanging from a tree. The mouse seeing the lion in the condition says, Dear lion the king, as far as I see, you have trouble. If you want, I can help you. The lion doesn't say something, but understanding his sad glance, the mouse climbs up and erodes the mesh. The lion falls to the ground and the mouse said, You underestimate me, but I save your life. We are get even with you now. A cicada sings songs with dancing butterflies in all of the summer. The cicada is very happy and sings songs as the summer will never end. When cicada is calming, the ant is working hard and carrying food to its nests for winter preparations. Autumn nearly finished, weather gets cold, ants start to escape to their nests, Tsukaida still sings songs with his guitar. Trees drop leaves, rain starts, winter comes, the ant is enjoying his warm nest and food. Tsukaida curves his guitar and tries to protect himself from the rain. One day, weather turns to snow. Skyda gets cold, hungry, start to find place to protect him. As a last chance, he beat the door of the ant for small food. The ant opens the door, seeing the Skyda begging, the ant say, You sing songs though all over the summer. Now it's time to dance. After the closing door, the cicada throws his guitar away, walks down slowly away. In a spring morning, a young god is eating leaves near on the riverside. He planned to go other side of the river for more leaves and decided to pass the river through a narrow wooden bridge. At the center of the narrow bridge, he encounters with an old god. They look each other for a while. Then old god says, Give me the way, I will go first. And the young god replies, I can't give my way, bridge is too narrow, I go first. No one gives the way to the other one and they start to fight. At the end, both stubborn gods drop from the narrow bridge. The end of stubborn gods is fall. Stubborny ghost drop the river, but what happens to the stubborny woman? In a spring day, the little frog jumps to the lakeside and calls his friend. My dear friend, what a lovely day, isn't it? What are you doing there? The other frog answers. Yes, a marvelous day indeed. Come on, let's catch some flies here. 
while they are talking, a cow was approaching to the lake slowly. Little frog says that, Quack, quack, look at this. What a nice and big animal this is, quack. They watch the cow while she drinks water from the lake. Small frog says that, What powerful and big animal is this? I wish I could be such an enormous animal too. Then the cow walks back slowly to the middle. After her, the little frog looks at the cow astonished and considers Actually, I can also be as powerful as her. Talking deep brightness, several times the frog starts to expand. While expanding, he also asks his friend that What do you think? Am I as big as her? But his friend replied, Not yet, my dear friend, not yet. Little Frog, her received speed continues swelling. Again, to Nate's friend asked, Rabbit, did I like her? Rabbit, did I like her? Other Frog, No man, could not be. After a period of time, the little frog becomes so big that he could not see anything around but his friend whispered, Not yet, my dear friend, not yet. At the end, the little frog rushed and the other frog thinks that If you don't like what you are and try to be something else, this is your end. In a spring morning, a crow sees a piece of cheese on the edge of the window. He flies slowly through the open window, checking around and seeing no one, she gets the cheese and flies back to the forest. In the forest, she lands to the branch of a tree. At that time, a fox walking around sees the crow with a piece of cheese on her beak. The fox thinks that I should get this delicious cheese from the beak of this crow. He calls the crow, Dear lovely crow, I can't listen a good song for a long time. Please sing a song with your marvelous voice. The crow adores the comments of the fox. She forgets the cheese on her beak and starts to cry out. The fox gets to drop the cheese. Eating the delicious cheese, the fox walks away and the crow thinks that be careful of anyone when he or she makes nice compliments because he or she may have a plan to get something from you.